I'm going to show you how STP works. I just got irritated with all the online resources and even Cisco NetCAD, NetCAD got some stuff wrong and even some other books you got from I got from Cybex and I just wanted to give it to you straight how all the roles are picked out the root bridge. It seems like people are missing these little bits and pieces. And I finally got the um, official Cisco press book, so um, I just wanted to break it down for you. Just the simplest way, STP, how it works. It doesn't have to be that complicated. So the first thing we need to do is find the root bridge, right? The holy temple, where do we go, right? The castle, we need to go to the castle. So what we do is we look at the lowest priority. A lot of switches have already by default 32768. So if that hasn't changed, because that's how we can rig the election, right? So we can make this the root bridge if we lower the uh, bridge priority. And right now I have them set by default, 32768. Um, then it uses the lowest MAC address. So I listed all the MAC addresses here for each switch. And if you look at it from left to right, 0001 is lower than 002. 002 or 000B. So this becomes the root bridge. And to kick it off, um, find the root bridge with the lowest priority or MAC address, um, sometimes called the bridge ID. Collectively, you put the priority, a number, and then the MAC address and stick it together and you read it from left to right. And then just to kick it off, all the active ports on the root bridge become the designated ports, right? Those can be. Um, uh, forwarding traffic. So let's do it right now. So we'll put this as D and D. So both of these get to be designated ports because they can forward. So now they send out, and like all the uh, switches are sending out these BPDUs, these frames, hellos that tell um, wh who the root bridge is. There's a process to it. I'm not going to go into detail. And it, well, the important thing is it advertises the cost. So right now the cost is zero right here. So it sends out a frame and this, this switch adds 19 to the cost because right here by default on its local port here, it knows that it's 100 megabits per second link right here. So it sets it to 19 and there's a table for it too right here. 100 for 10 megabits, 19 for 100 megabit. Uh, connection uh, four for one gigabit and two for ten um, gigabits per second so um, you can even rig that on the port right you can change the uh, the cost on that link right so it sends out zero and then when it gets to here it adds 19 and then when it sends it out it also says it's 19 right and then this switch here adds a uh, cost of 19 again to get a total cost to the root bridge and that's how it kind of works so after um all these switches figure out who the root bridge is we need to figure out the lowest cost for each switch to the root bridge right we need to go to the castle twilight's castle the direct most direct fastest route and we use uh cost to do that so let's figure out this switch here we can see if we go out this segment and here that it would be 19 plus 19, which is more than just the direct cost here of 19. We go around and it's even larger, right? So we want the shortest, um, the lowest cost to the root bridge here. So port FA0 slash 1 should become our root port for um, this switch. And there's only one per switch, right? So um, if that is a tiebreaker, um, for example, if we didn't have this link here and we just had these two, let's say we're looking at this switch here and this is both 19, 19, 19, 19, we would use the lowest bridge ID if the costs were tied, right? So we look at this switch and this switch is bridge ID and since the port priority is the same, um, it's, since the low, uh, the priority is the same, um, 32768, then we look at the MAC address and we can see 0002 is smaller than 000B. So this 
this port here would become the root port if that were the case. But let's go back to where we were. So we're finding out that this segment here is the shortest, the lowest cost to the root bridge. So if we open it up, take a look at it, show spanning, we can see FA01 is indeed the root port, has assigned the root role. So let's go ahead and mark that down as the root. So let's find another switch. Let's look at this switch here. So if we add up all the costs, right, if we go this direction, it's 19, 19, 19, too much, two 19s, too much, and the lowest cost right here is the direct route, obviously. It's a cost of just 19. Because we add here, we get a zero, and it sends it out that hello frame, and then we add 19, like I mentioned before, on our port, because we know by default, this link here is 100 megabits, so we assign a cost of, and the table's right there, um, 100 megabits, 19, so that's the lowest cost. So this, FA0 slash 2, should become, this port should become the root port for this bridge. So we look at FA02, and, and indeed it is the root for this, um, the root port for the switch. So let's mark that down. So the root. See, we're getting, making some progress. So the next uh, thing to look at is this switch. Let's find out the root port for this. So again, we go through the list, finding the root ports, lowest cost to the bridge. If that ties, then the lowest neighbor bridge ID. If that ties, then the lowest port priority, because you can set a priority on the port too if you want. And then if all else fails, then it's the lowest neighbor internal port number, right? So FA0 slash 1, FA0 slash 3, stuff like that. So if we look at this, we notice that it's a cost of 19 and 19 again to the root bridge the same way this direction. So the problem is we tie at cost. So the next thing we look at is the bridge ID, neighbor bridge ID, right, on that segment, these two segments, because they tie on cost. So if we look at the bridge ID, we can see this is 000B, which is greater than 0002. So this link here, sh this port and link should become the root port right here. So if we actually look at it, show spanning tree, we can see that it becomes the root port, FA0 slash 3. So let's mark it. So this will become the root port. So now we have, in our switched environment, figured out all the root ports. So the next thing is to figure out the, the blocked ports and the designated ports that can forward out those BPDUs, those frames. So we can start with, uh, let's see, this segment right here. Let's go between these two switches, right? So these are the rules. Finding the designated ports for LAN segments. So between non-root switches, uh, find the switch that has the lowest cost to the root bridge. Oh, typo. Um, so if we look at these two switches between this segment right here, which one has the lowest cost to the root bridge? Well, if we look at this, it's a 19. And if we look at this, it's 19. So the uh, cost tie. But for example, if we set the um, this port here, FA0 slash 2 right here, this root port, as a cost of, let's say we set it as, uh, um, actually, I think it's the, n no, it's the local port. If we set this as, for example, instead of 19, we put it as 4, this side of the segment right here, FA0 slash 1, I think this port right here, this link, this side on the switch, would become the designated port, and this would be blocked. But it's the other way around, because I don't have that set. That's just an example of how you would use um, the first, yeah, the lowest cost to the root bridge. So since that...